Hey everyone, I'm Ian Atkinson with NASA Spaceflight, here to give you an overview of the Boca Chica launch site as of early April 2021. As always, all of the following photos and videos are from Mary, at Boca Chica Gal on Twitter, an NSF team member and Boca Chica resident. Thanks, Mary. SpaceX has been pushing ahead with development flights of their Starship rocket over the past few months. Four full-scale prototype Starships have flown since December 2020. While only one of the four, SN10, actually completed a landing, each flight has provided priceless data for the development program. The most recent flight with Starship SN11 ended in a sort of metallic confetti as the vehicle broke apart mid-air after engine reignition. The investigation into SN11's failure is still ongoing, so we don't know exactly what happened. The fog at the launch site certainly didn't help either. The cleanup of SN11 continues as of recording. Over the past few months, the Boca Chica shipyard has only increased its cadence of production. As of writing, Starship SN15 is finishing up processing in the high bay, following the stacking of its nose cone. SN15 and onward Starships feature numerous improvements and changes over past vehicles. This includes simplified construction in both the Starship vehicle as well as its Raptor engines. SN15 is the next vehicle to fly because of these improvements. Serial numbers 12 through 14 were of the same design as SN11, so SpaceX skipped their assembly to fly the new upgrades on SN15 sooner. The next series of upgrades will take place on Starship SN20 and onwards. These vehicles will actually be orbit capable. Because of the coming upgrades, SN18 and SN19 may be skipped to expedite SN20, which is currently expected to be a part of the first orbital flight. Speaking of orbital starships, the first Super Heavy booster, BN-1, or Booster Number 1, has completed stacking in the high bay. BN-1 was confirmed by Elon Musk to only be a production pathfinder, and won't ever make it to the test stand. The fact that it wouldn't be used for testing was made obvious because crews actually cut off a segment from the liquid oxygen tank, making it 2 meters shorter, in order to fit inside the high bay. On Twitter, Elon elaborated that the design of Super Heavy has been changed so BN-1 was already out of date even before it finished assembly. The next booster, BN-2, is expected to be outfitted with Raptor engines and be installed on the orbital launch pad for testing just before the end of this month. Now whether or not they meet that goal, we'll just have to wait and see. BN-2 may also be the first super heavy booster to take flight in a short hop test, likely similar to those from SN-5 and SN-6. However, that depends on the ever-changing schedule at Boca Chica. BN-3 may be the first booster to fly with a Starship on top, as part of the first orbital flight attempt. However, just like with BN-2, flight assignments are constantly changing. Elon even hinted on Twitter that BN-2 may be orbit ready. Parts of BN-2 and 3 have been spotted, however, no major assembly has begun yet. That may have to wait until SN-15 or BN-1 leave the high bay. But before BN-2 can be installed on the orbital launch mount, the pad needs some tanks to store its propellants. Rather than using pre-built storage tanks, like with the suborbital launch site, SpaceX is building their own set of propellant tanks for the orbital launch site, called the GSE, or Ground Support Equipment Tanks. These seven tanks are based on the architecture of Starship itself, and use the same design of 9-meter barrel segments and tank domes. These tanks will be stacked on concrete pedestals near the pad, similar in design to the pedestals used to stack Starhopper and Starship Mark I. The orbital launch mount itself continues to make progress. The launch table, which will directly support and attach to the Super Heavy booster, has been assembled at the build site. It will be moved to the launch site and stacked atop the six supports in the near future. Just a stone's throw away from the orbital mount, the integration tower is beginning to rise from the ground. 
This structure will eventually host a large crane for stacking starships and super heavy boosters on top of the launch mount. It will also feature the cradle system for catching the super heavy boosters, since they won't be outfitted with landing legs. As of recording, the integration tower is only a collection of rebar and concrete forms that kinda looks like a castle. Soon it will grow to become the tallest structure in South Texas. At the build site, outfitting of the high bay is finishing up. The bridge crane, which will move and stack super heavy booster segments inside the high bay, has been installed. It has yet to be used. And just next to the high bay, a new mystery structure has been assembled, and a nose cone was installed inside of it. The nose cone was recently outfitted with what seemed to be mock-up fins. The purpose of the nose cone and the structure are unknown. Just next door, at the old gas well site, SpaceX is making quick progress on its liquid oxygen farm. Using a large distiller, they will separate oxygen gas from the air before compressing it into liquid oxygen. This will then be sent to the launch site and used for Starship and Super Heavy flights. The liquid oxygen distiller will aid in development of their fuel refinery, to be built and used someday to refuel starships on Mars. And that's it for this video. If you have any feedback, feel free to leave it in the comments below. This helps us make every new video even better than the last. And if you'd like to support us, feel free to subscribe or become a channel member, with several cool perks available for our channel members. Thanks for watching.